All right. So today, self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing to talk about, isn't it? So what is self-sabotage? Hmm. What is self-sabotage? Hmm. What what is that? Like what is it? And it, it, it's you know, really self-sabotage, if you think about it, is is it's when you know that you're going for something, but something inside you stops you. And it, it's like an internal conflict, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, and so it, it's like, I would really like to have that, but I'd really like that, but, right? What is that? And so the question you must ask yourself, so can I ask first is, who who's experienced self sabotage with your choices? Yeah, who's experienced self sabotage? I have for sure. I have. So how does it show up? How does it show up for you? How does self sabotage show up for you? Does um, self sabotage show up like as excuses, uh, procrastination? Um, how does it show up? Distraction, lack of taking action, fear. Drinking, yeah, yeah. Substance abuse, yeah, how does it show up? You know, it can show up as um, going for something as soon as it gets hard, um, changing it. It can it can show up as, as, as actually not making any choices at all. That self said, you know, just saying, ah, I'm good. I don't want anything. Just just settling. Settling is self-sabotage, right? Right? And, and so so self-sabotage is is really interesting. So to really think about it, it, it's quite a perplexing thing, you know. There's something that we would like, and typically we would like to have a, a good life, right? On on one side, you know, we want to have a good life, right? We want to have the best life possible you know we want to have a healthy body and a happy family and you know we want to do some good work in the world and we, you know we want to have abundance and we want to have energy and we want to be able to you know experience new things and maybe create art and you know we, we want to have these things right we we want that isn't it that's that's what we want and it doesn't seem like any of those are bad things you know like Going and having more money than you can spend. That doesn't seem like a bad thing on the outside. Or having unlimited energy or vitality. That doesn't, it doesn't seem bad to have a purpose in life or um to, you know, to to maybe write a book that's a bestseller or you know, like whatever. It doesn't seem can I just ask it? It doesn't seem it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with it. It's like, oh, those are good things, isn't it? And then it comes to us actually going and, and having it. And as we go to have it, there's this other part of us. And for some reason, and it doesn't seem that useful, does it? Like for some reason, it doubts. What's the point of doubting? Like, what's the point of, of fear? What's it? And so you think about it, really just consider what's the point of all this, right? So we have this procrastination, this doubt, this fear, this not going for it, this changing ideas, all of the, what, what, what's going on there? Because what, what, what's that about? Hey, because if, if there's something over here that's good, like having lots of money for your family or, or having a business that works without you, that's good. What, what's this going on? What's, what's going on? And it's really interesting. So, what's going on over here? Like, why? Why am I worried about that? It's not. It's not a bad thing. You know, most of us want good things, right? We want to have good things. We want to have, you know, a great relationship. We want to be loved. We want to, you know. But then, but then, what's going on? And you go, well, that's really interesting. And and, and what's interesting about it is that it, it's a common theme, isn't it? It's a common theme that the the biggest uh, the biggest challenge that most of us uh, have with creating what it is that we would love to create stares at us in the mirror right like that's that that seems to be the biggest challenge but that but that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense it's a why why is that hmm. why is that and when you think about it enough all of these feelings these doubt these fears these inactions these procrastinations, these sabotaging actions, all of 
all of these things must have a benefit. Must have a benefit, right? Because if there was no benefit to the system, why would we do it, right? There must be a benefit. You go, well, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of all these actions? And what you'll find is that all those feelings of, of doubt or anxiety, they're all actually a communication from a part of our consciousness to stop us doing something that risks losing belonging with our family or experiencing a different experience than what we experience as safe. It all comes back to safety and belonging. All comes back to safety and belonging. So if we examine this belonging, belonging is very important to the unconscious. The unconscious mind between zero and seven really just wants to make sure that uh, it belongs to its family. Belonging, belonging, meaning I'm taken care of, meaning I, I can't fend for myself. So I need to make sure that, that these people and this society around, I belong to them because without their knowledge and their strength and their understanding, and they're giving me nourishment and shelter, I'm done for. I'm done. Isn't that right? Isn't it? I'm done for. I'm, uh, if I, if I, if these, if they cast me out as a, as a toddler, I'm, I'm done for. So I must, so that the unconscious makes a decision to belong to whatever, whatever place or society or uh, I must belong here. And so this is very important and it doesn't leave us. It doesn't leave us. The, the other thing, which is even, even deeper and more uh, interesting, is that the unconscious is trying to understand how the world is, and it seeks safety. So how does the unconscious know if something is safe or not? How does it know if something is safe or not? Hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't know if it's safe or not until it witnesses it being safe in someone around it or experiences it itself. It doesn't know if it's safe. It doesn't know it's safe until it survived it. As soon as it finds safety, it makes up a decision that there's no point to keep looking. I've already found something that won't kill me. See, the unconscious wants to belong because it means it survives and wants safety because it means that it survives. Okay. And so as soon as the unconscious bumps into something that it survives, it's met its, its goal. And whatever that is, the unconscious decides that is safe. So here's what happens. 30 years down the track, you're off wanting to go in and start a business. But all your unconscious has ever seen is people in jobs. All that it's ever seen, all that it's ever experienced is jobs. So having a business feels unsafe. And so as you go to have it, it throws up all this rubbish, right? All these ideas of, you know, of doubt or uncertainty or fear, all of these smoke screens, all of this information with one intention. We don't know if that's safe. We don't know if that's safe. And it's, it's, it is, it's fascinating to me. I don't know if it's fascinating to you, but to me, it's very fascinating because the only difference between a job and a business is in a job, you're relying on the business owner. And, and when you when you own the business, you're the owner. So to me, it's more safe to be the owner because then I'm relying on me. Whereas if I've got a job, I'm relying on someone else's safety. It's the same structure, 
anyway, that just makes me laugh because it feels to me, it feels safer to have a business. You know, I don't want to uh, hand over my, you know, <laughs> my income to somebody else. So very interesting. Hey, you know, very interesting. And, and so this is logic though. And, and the unconscious doesn't, doesn't work in logic. It doesn't work in logic. So, so what is self-sabotage? Hey, what is self-sabotage? At the base of it, self-sabotage is a cosmic joke that has been played on us. Self-sabotage is the ultimate never-ending war between uh, what you would love to create that is new and what you've always had that is old. It is literally the battle of evermore and forevermore. These two, these two aspects in you. And it can show up as guilt. It can show up as doubt. It can show up as all sorts of things that are in opposition to your heart. So you have your heart, which is what you would love to go and create and do and be in the world. And that's what this course is about, is bringing your heart into the world. And, and then you have then you have the fear. And that and they just sit there. And, and, it, and it's very important to understand the difference. Self-sabotage is only an aspect of you fighting itself. Because what self is sabotage, which self is the one sabotaging and which self is the one that's that's uh, that's winning? Right. It's not really self-sabotage. What we refer to as self-sabotage is actually a victory to the unconscious. Right. Self-sabotage is actually the unconscious beating the conscious. That's what it is, isn't it? It's your safety patterns being stronger than your conscious will. That's what it actually is, because it can't be you're not really sabotaging anything. You start, you're still alive. You didn't die. And that's the unconscious's only uh, goal. Make sense? So once we once we back out and start to understand this a bit more, when we can put labels on it and uh, and understand it, it loses its power. It loses its power. It really loses its power because once you realize, oh, there's nothing wrong with my unconscious, for goodness sake, the human species would not have survived. You know, uh, there, there's four things the unconscious goes for, by the way. It's, uh, it goes for fight, flight, um, food, and uh, reproduction. It, it just needs four things. And as long as those things are happening, then uh, then you will, you, you know, the unconscious is happy. It's it, it's happy. So so look, let's let's just back out and look at self sabotage it, and, and to to uh, look at look at this this structure. Okay, great. This is the structure of consciousness that that we are all experiencing, and when we when we back out and look at that structure, can everyone just uh, just do it for a second? Just back out and look at that structure. There's a part of me that always wants to stay the same and is you know, so worried about things. And then there's part of me that really can go for things in life. And just, just back out and just feel the difference between the two. And, and as you do it, just kind of send gratitude and love to both parts of them. You know, the part of you that's like, you know, that wants to, that wants to keep the body alive. You know, how good is it that it doesn't want to have to keep on trying to, you know, you know, do new things. It, it doesn't have to keep learning. It, it's uh it figured out how to keep you alive. It learned from its epigenetics. It learned from generational patterns. It, and, and, and you're here, you're alive. And that's very useful. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, just really thank that part of you. Then there's another part of you. And this other part of you, gosh, it's it, it wants to go experience life and basically wants to do things new. And, and as you just sort of, uh, you know, experience and send gratitude to these two, just notice what each of them are really after and then feed it back to me. Feed it back to me. You know, when you just, when you just, when you look at it, you go, cool. All right, cool. So this is, this is how it is.
This is just how it is. This is this is what it's going to be like. Now, you as a you know conscious creator, somebody that has a magnetic mind, you have a choice. And you have a choice whether to you because you're actually a third entity. Okay, so think of those two entities. Okay, you're actually able to observe both of those. Can I just get some feedback for a second? Who is able to observe both of those, right? You're able to observe a part of you that wants, you know, new stuff. Yeah. And then a part of you that wants safety. So, you're, so now what is the you that's doing that observing? That's the super conscious. And the super conscious, if you step back, that you, the observer, the you that's that's outside of those two, this you is able to, to, to actively engage in either one of those. Yeah, and, and as as Ahmed said, you can use whatever name you want for that: the observer, soul, source, consciousness, the God within. I like to call it super conscious. You can call it Sue, Bob, James, Jim, whatever. I've heard, uh, and and that's just the English words, right? Whatever you choose, right? But we just all can experience it. And so, what we must understand is is this is what I mean by the two different the two different structures, you know. So you you can you can base yourself in this in this uh, in this unconscious uh, structure, or, or you can go go with your heart. So you have these two, and so self sabotage is, is when the individual is going for something that they love, and the unconscious is the one that's ruling the show. That's what self-sabotage is. So next time you're going for something in your life and you choose, uh, well, you start to experience one of our uh, our self-sabotaging strategies, you know, you start procrastinating or feeling fear or feeling doubt or feeling worry. The first thing I'd really like you to do is literally to just relabel it. Relabel it. Go, wow, cool. So my unconscious is really, you know, is is really you know present here my unconscious is is really really you know it's, it's showing up like wow what's it trying to say to me you know it's man, wow look at that and and once you label it you start to orient to it very differently and i'll give you an example so just just recently i had someone else take over running my company and i'm writing my book and my new book I'm, I'm doing a bit of coaching and I'm actually playing a lot of golf at the moment. I'm just, just taking really just, just choosing to, to do that. And man, my unconscious has, has kicking up guilt all over the place, you know? So I'm out there and, and that's what I, I choose to do. And my unconscious is saying, how can you be here on the golf course? You know, what if, what if they make wrong decisions and it all falls apart and, you know, well, you know, and what are you doing? This isn't your purpose to be out here just whacking up. This isn't, this isn't useful. This isn't valuable, you know, and what if this and what, and, and how can you justify making millions of dollars if you're not, if you're not suffering? This was the whole thing. That's what was really, and this is recent, you know, we're talking in the last month. How can you justify Blah, blah, blah. You need to race back. You need to be there. You need to be needed. Blah, blah. But none of it's true. None of it's true. What's true is what I was choosing. Does that mean none of it's true? And so you, you must step back and label it. You must step back and label it. And this is the first, you label it, and, I, and you label it. And, and there I am on the golf course laughing. And the people I'm playing with say, what's so funny? Oh, I made something else up. They didn't know what I was going through. But, but you know, you just label it. You laugh at it. But that's it. Now, the next thing is once you label it and you go, look at all, look at this, look at this. This is so interesting, you know. Wow, you, you might get curious. You might want to go, uh, oh, why, why is this happening? And, and I'm a curious person, so I do that. Well, why, why would I be like this? I go, well, you know, I come from a long line of people that were suffering. So to not suffer financially and to be out there playing 
golf felt guilty you know in a family of thieves uh, the 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 one that doesn't doesn't steal feels guilty in a family of suffer and work hard somebody out playing golf four times a week and uh, you know making millions of dollars and writing a book feels guilty but you shouldn't you know it's not like a you know it doesn't make sense it's to get the do you get the point here it, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, it stops them or helps them. So, so you just got to acknowledge it. And, and you might ask these questions, well, why? And typically, if you ask the question, well, I wonder how this showed up, uh, what, you will, you, what you will find is that uh, your, your experience of you or your family is in opposition to what you're going for, typically. So that's interesting. Now, the next thing that we, we, we can do is we can start asking ourselves, okay, cool. What is instructing my unconscious to do this? And this is how I let it go. And so that I can just go do and have my choices. And, and uh, it feels great. So, so you ask yourself, well, what's instructing it? And this is where we do recode. Because as soon as you let go, whatever those instructions are, that are causing that to feel guilty or that to feel uncertain or doubt or whatever. And as soon as you let go of those instructions, it's like, did you guys see that weather balloon that got shot down over the uh, the Atlantic last week, right? The the US and Chinese apparently sent a, sent a spy weather balloon across and they shot it. And do you guys see it? Anyway, go check it out. The video is, as soon as you, as soon as you uh, recode it, it's, it's no longer there. And it's the strangest thing. It's the strangest thing. Yesterday, I went out and played golf, and just enjoyed it. No, it's just, just what I'm choosing. Wrote my book. I wrote my book for six hours straight yesterday. It was unbelievable. Wrote my book, went out, had a quick nine holes of golf. Had... It's not there. And that is mastery. That is what we're doing here. And, and I really want to spend time on this today. So just to really build the mental models up in your head, it is just like you're allowed to have it any way you want it. It's just the rules and instructions and unconscious patterning that was created in your formative years and passed down through the generations that causes you to feel all these other things. And so what we must do is we must make choices that our heart wants for no reason. Look, there's no reason for me to want to write another book. There's no reason for me to want to play golf. There's no reason for me to want to, what, what are my other choices right now, uh, to take my company to 100 million. There's no reason to start a fit. There's no reason. There's no reason. Does that make sense? There's no, there's no reason. It's just these are fun things that I would choose and would like to, to do. I would like to, to, to pour my heart into a book and give that gift to the world because it feels good. I would like the challenge of taking my, my company to, to 100 million. It seems seems like a fun, uh, enjoyable thing. I'd, I'd like these. There's no reason. So the first, you, you must just go and make these heart choices. As soon as you make heart choices... As soon as you do it, your unconscious will, will show its cards. Literally, and I mean show its cards, it will literally it will, it will throw up certain feelings. It will have some negative self-talk. It will procrastinate. You know, one of my choices is I'm, is I'm reshaping my body, complete body composition change. And, 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 you know, I'm putting on more muscle, I'm losing fat, I'm re and that's what I'm doing. No reason, it's just a fun thing I'd like to do. And then the unconscious wants to go and eat burgers and fries. And, and you know, why is that, right? Why is that? Well, that's because there's patterning sitting in my system that says, if you don't have enough calories, that's a scary, that's scary. So you should race off and get more calories because in times in the past, we haven't had enough. All right, well, I get it, get the instructions, shift the instruction. It's okay. I've got more than enough calories to get, you know. Uh, we have a, a, just so you know, super conscious, we have an obesity uh, pandemic, epidemic now, not a not a scarcity one, no no problem. So, you know, we get back to it. Do you see what I'm saying? And then, and then as soon as you, as soon as you do that, 
then you're, you're eating the right food and you're you're taking the right action and you're going to the gym and you're doing this rather than this idea that you have to you know fight yourself the whole way and and you know uh, drag your feet in and, and push and motivate and hustle and and, and I want to get this point across. You can have success without struggle. You can have the success without struggling for it. You're allowed to. And so what we must always do is we must make choices. We must make choices. And as we make choices, we choose to have more money than we can spend, or we choose to have, uh, you know, world famous stuff, or we choose to just own a beautiful house by the beach, or we choose to play golf every day, or go fishing every day, or whatever, whatever we choose it, we can choose it. As soon as we make that choice, we must engage emotionally with it. But as soon as we engage emotionally with it, our unconscious is going to start kicking up all the reasons why that is unsafe. We've never had that. But what it's basically saying is we've never had that before. We might die, right? Because it never has. And it's it, it, it's very important. As soon as it kicks up, there's us being the higher consciousness. We know that we're not going to die from playing golf every day. <laughs> we know, we know, we know it's going to be okay to just sit down and write a book and to let someone else run our company. We know that if things go wrong, we step in. We know. We know it's okay. So we're, we're the one in control. Does that make sense? We're the higher consciousness. So we say, it's actually going to be okay, unconscious. Thank you for all your warnings. And we're going to go in and we're going to let some things go because we actually know better. We know it's totally fine to have lots of money. We know it's totally fine. Uh, to have relationships that we love. We, we know, we're cool, we've seen it, we're good. We know we know better than you. You were programmed at two years old and, and, and we know better. So, so we're just going to let, let those, we're going to love you and we're going to let it go. And this is why our work is, is never about making any part of you wrong. It's never about fixing any part of you because there's no part of you that's wrong or incorrect or, or out of a, it's just got wrong instructions. And that's it. And you must look at yourself this way. You must realize that that you have these these things and you have automatic programs and and it's just how it is.